I'm the face behind Kitchier and Company Fiber Arts. I've been working on a, not a bunch, just one <laughs> skill builder video because people have been talking about wanting to know how to clean dirty fleeces with the suet fermentation method. And that's my favorite um, because you could do a big batch and most of my fiber is dirty, really dirty and big batches because I go to sheep farms and take out of the barn what they, they need to get rid of. So this is a very helpful method for me. I hope I can help you clean your dirty fleeces or even just get you interested and get you started in uh, processing big dirty fleeces because there's beautiful yarn at the end. So this is going to be the first of a skill builder video series that I'm putting together to help those of you who are interested in learning how to process your fiber and all the way to yarn. You know, we can make beautiful yarn out of really nasty fleeces. Anyway, if you've learned something from this video, subscribe, like, and share so that other people can learn right along with you. So we're going to the barn to find the fleeces I've been waiting for this kind of weather for. We're gonna sewing clean them. My favorite, my favorite kind. You can do big batches of filthy, rotten, dirty fleeces. And just leave it out here for days in the hot sun and that does all the work for you. Okay, we found the buttons from last year. Digging them out. Oh yeah. These have to be scrubbed. They've been sitting around in the barn. They were sitting around outside last year, but we'll clean them up and we'll get some wool in them. I like these because these these uh, lids lock really good. See all those ladybugs in there? Those all have to come out. I think I got these at the Home Depot. But the black will keep the heat in and they're nice and big so you can put a whole fleece or even more in. Okay. Here we got four tubs of Jacob fleece. I'm not going to wash this today, but that's what it looks like. Can't really tell how bad or how dirty, that's a real good fleece, how dirty this is, but uh, this is the least of my problems. I got some real nasty Corydale that really cleans up nicely. All right. So, we'll this back. All right, we found some Texel. Texel's awesome. See, oh, it's so awesome. It's got these little, uh, I love this stuff. These little waves in it, this little crimp. That's so awesome. But this is still not my dirtiest. This is one of my favorites, but not my dirtiest. Let me see what this one is. All right, this looks like Cheviot. This was washed about 25 years ago. So it doesn't really need a suent cleaning. It just needs to go through one more time just because it it smells old. Let me smell. Let me smell. Well, it smells detergent-y, <laughs> like a detergent, but those are not my problem today. I keep them in these to keep the, the bugs and the critters out of them, and it works pretty good. I'm looking for a big old bag of dirty Corydale. Oh, look, look. Woo! That's not Corydale, but that is dirty. See how dirty that is? That is looking like some more mohair. Yep. Wow. Look at the staple length on that. Alright, we'll clean this one up. 
see how we do with this one. And there's the Cordale. You could just see how dirty that is. Let's see what this one is. Oh, look at this. This is Romney. That is Romney. We're going to save that. That's a small bag of Romney. I love Romney. <laughs> when you don't see them all year, it's like uh, Christmas. Here we go. And this is that nasty Corydale I told you about. Looks like some Romney's in there. But it's a lot of Corydale. We got a lot of nasties in there. But I've gotten some really nice yarn out of this. That suet cleaning will just get rid of all of this. So let's take this out. We may need both boxes for this. All right, so this is the assignment this week. We're gonna clean up the buckets, get the wool in the buckets, then we're going to get them soaking in probably six days of blasting hot heat. We'll uncover them and rinse the stink off of them and let them dry outside and see what we get. shot of it because this one is about the nastiest one I have These things are just nasty. I just pull them out like. I don't know if you're ever gonna get that. Some of the stuff out, but. Oh, there's a feather. Interesting. that water is already it's just gonna ferment and clean itself I'll explain the science of it later I just like to call it magic I actually think we can get this whole fleece in here
yeah, these are these are nasty parts. But if you get you get the fleece cheap enough, see that that's a good those are good locks. If you get it cheap enough, you can just muddle through the dirty. We'll see what happens to that one. Because it does turn into beautiful yarn. If you see me on Instagram, you see the I've done a batch of this already. You've seen me make yarn out of it. This looks like a little bit of Romney mixed in. That's all right. Yeah, we'll get a whole fleece in here. I'm gonna go look for another old fleece. Put in the other bucket. These are just black pieces of fleece from something else. So here's the entire fleece, or fleeces. I've got a whole barn full of fleece. Had to go through it with a fine tooth comb. But I got some pretty awesome fleeces. This will be awesome when it's done marinating, like my daughter says. <laughs> so it's supposed to look like this. We try to keep it under the water. So I'll fill it up a little bit more, and this lid will keep it in the under the water. This is polypay. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Looks like polypay to me. See those little tiny ridges, 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 ridges. Can you see that? Focus. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice soft fleece. It's dirty, it came off of a local farm. Got this one by word of mouth. Talk to people, let them know you spin. Everybody knows everybody. <sighs> yeah, this is polypay. Yeah, let's go wash this one up. All right, second, second bucket. See how much if we could get done at one time is awesome. It's a lot of work in the end because you have to pull it all out and rinse it all out, but then you've got clean, clean fleece. Alright. Start loading this one. I think I'm gonna take Take some of this in and uh, look at it. Make sure it is what I'm calling it, but I'm pretty sure that's what this is. A lot of vegetable matter, but after you're done combing it, it really doesn't even matter. Yeah, that'll be good. These were sort of skirted. I think they're pretty good. Well, there. That's just, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. There's a lot of fleece in there. We'll see what happens with this bit. I know a lot of people pull all this stuff out, but this could, this could come away. We'll see. I can always throw it away when I'm done. If I don't see it coming out. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right. 
That was a nice big fleece. Yeah. probably get that second bag in here but we'll see what happens if I feel like we we have a lot of extra room I will uh, I'll go get that second one see how white this is already getting just running the water over it it's gonna be shiny white oh, I love this it's my favorite kind of cleaning Love it, love it, love it. Okay, these, we're back inside because it's hot out there. I changed my clothes and washed my hands and all of that. This is the sample we brought in from the PolyPay, and I, I was pretty sure it was a PolyPay, but I just uh, want to make sure. So you see all the little, maybe you can see all the little tiny crimps in here, and there's all these little tiny crimps in here, and sometimes this is characterized as a fine wool. It's got, it uh, says six to nine crimps to the inch. So let's just look, because this is fun. All right. So we've got two, four, six, eight, nine, nine crimps to the inch. Two, four, six, eight. There. So, and they said that the length of the staple, which is the, this is called the staple, from the cut end to the tip, and this staple length is pretty good. Wow, oh, it's almost five inches. It's like four and three quarters inches. So, three to five inches it could be. I'm pretty sure. We're gonna call this polypate. Four and a quarter. So every time I make, I get a new fleece, I take a sample and I um, spin it, ply it, wash it, and put it away with the name, uh, what I spun it on, what whirl I used, what I plied it on, what whirl I used for that, and what it measured at. This one says it's not wet finished, which is another good thing to put down if you haven't wet finished it. But this is the PolyPay. It is, it is, uh, it's a, it's, I wouldn't say it's close to skin soft. It's a little scratchy, but it still makes a really bouncy, nice fluffy yarn. So that's gonna be a good fleece. This fleece, this yarn was just as dirty as those fleeces I put in that bucket. That's why I call it magic. Okay, it's sweltering. We waited till the afternoon to come out to check on the uh, fermenting wool with the suet cleaning. And we're only gonna stay out here to check it and see if there's bubbles yet, see if it's making its own soap yet. And then we're going back in because we don't want to die. Okay. Here we are. Oh, it's plenty warm, it's plenty warm. And it's starting to smell bad, huh? <laughs> That's good. See all these soap bubbles? Look at look at the soap. Look at the soap. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. See, that's exciting. See all these these are softening up, coming apart, cleaning. That's cool. Now you can see all the soap. It's coming off the wool. And it's, it's cleaning itself up. 
awesome. All right, I'm gonna put the lid back on this one. Check the other one. That's awesome. Okay. Good work. Okay. This one is not as warm. It's usually, it's in the shade a lot more, I think. But let's see. You can see the soap. This is the polypay. I don't know if I'll be able to move it. It's it's warm. Yeah, this one's gonna have to. I don't know, we might be able to pull this into the sunshine a little bit more because it's under a an overhang a little bit. Alright. Yeah, it's starting to get that smelly funk that you want to smell when you're when it's cleaning. We'll come back out in a couple of days and check it again. And probably next Monday we will uh, start rinsing it and cleaning it. We'll have some nice clean wool. Alright, we're going to go check the wool again one more time. And... We'll see if it's ready to pull out and rinse. I'm, I'm thinking it will because it was sweltering the last couple of days. So we'll check it out, see how much soap there is, and then maybe we'll be rinsing today. All right, this time both buckets were in the sun. That's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty smelly. light here but you can just see all that dirt that was on it all those tips that were so bad the other day yeah you can tell what's good and what's bad see that's just coming apart it's So good. This was all thick and crusty the other day. That's so good. All right. I'm thinking we should rinse it. See all those soap bubbles? All these bubbles are, are the soap from the, from the wool. I didn't put any soap in here. All right. See, this was all big stained and black and it's just coming apart it's just great it's just great it's super super duper all right awesome awesome all right this is the this is the poly pay all right it's got some nice warm heat on it Yeah, this one was a little dirtier. It was a lot dirtier. But you can see, it's just coming apart. This was all just stuck to itself. And now it can be used. Now that'll wash out with some soap later on. And now it can be used. That's why I call this magic. It just takes care of all that. That's a bunch of VM. We don't need that. But I say, I say we're ready to rinse. Okay, now we're gonna go get the great big buckets. I just got uh, a couple years ago, big um, plastic tubs with the rope handles from Walmart. They were all about $5 a piece. They work really great for uh, rinsing the fiber. So let's go do that. I'm filling these two buckets to rinse. I'll put in uh, one rinse and then two rinse and then I'll squeeze it out and put it over here. 
uh, then it'll be ready to dry, set out and dry. And you want to dry it before you take it in the house to wash it so that the stink is gone. When it's dry, it's not supposed to have a smell anymore. Still got a lot of VM in it, but compared to what it was, that's great. satisfied with that. Get these three into their rinse baths and let them sit for another 20 minutes. You can see how clear that is already after one, one washing. So we'll let these sit in their rinse water for 20 minutes and see if that's clear enough or if we need one more rinse. So that's only one wash and one rinse and we're already pretty clear. Okay, I'll see you when we get back. All right, now we're gonna check and see if this is ready for the spin or if we have to rinse it one more time. So let's see our first one. I'm 
gonna say I like how clean that water is. Let's check this one. Yep, I think that I think we're ready. We're ready to take it to the Yeah, the lighting's not letting you see how clear it is. There you go. We're ready to send it to the clothes spinner. So I take the, the wet and I just squeeze it like this into a colander and get most of the, as much water out as I can. And then that goes over to the, the clothes spinner.
Okay, so here we are with the end products from all that work. This is the PolyPay. It's a really fluffy yarn. And it's thick and squishy and stretchy. I spun it on my traditional wheel, Ashford traditional. And I really love the polypay. It's soft. Close to skin soft, I would say, and it's really squishy. But that came from that dirty pile of fleece. And here is the Romney. It's a very different fleece. It's longer. It's not as fluffy. It's a longer staple. You saw in some of the video. And I spun it real thin. This is a fingering weight. It's not stretchy, but it is soft. And this came from that pile of dirty fleece you saw. I started with the beginning. You can still see some vegetable matter, but when you're knitting, that comes out. See, it's just real easy. Some people say you, you grind it in, but I think during the process, the spinning and the combing, even the washing takes out some but there's not, there's not, I can't see any more in the yarn. So that this is the end result. I'm happy. I love this way to clean fleece. And I did find that when you use the suet liquid again, it even does a better job on the next batch. So try that. I got some what I thought was stained silvery gray wool, but after it was rinsed and washed, it was white, just like this, just like these. I was gonna talk about the science of it, but there's a website I found, bluebarnfiber.blogspot.com, all about suet fermentation. I'm going to um, put that in the description below and you can Read that and find out the entire explanation of the science behind this. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.